Hi travelers! This is Six You Should See at the Orangery Museum in Paris. If you like us, subscribe! The Orangery Museum is a home to many impressionist and modern artists and located in the west corner of Tuileries Garden in Paris. This is a beautiful park in the middle of Paris city and the sunset view from this garden is just breathtaking. This was one of my favorite moments in Paris this spring and I recommend this experience for everyone. Also, there is Rodin's The Kiss sculpture in front of the entrance to the museum, so don't forget to stop by here too. So let's begin today's six you should see at the Orangerie Museum in Paris. Number six on our list is Annie Rousseau's The Wedding Party. Annie Rousseau was a French post-impressionist painter who gained the recognition of self-taught genius after his death. Some of his masterpieces can be familiar to us. Like the new Facebook Metaverse advertisement, Meta transformed Rousseau's 1908 painting, Fight Between a Tiger and a Buffalo, into a 3D video. And his Jungle series is known to be the great influence on the movie Madagascar. Rousseau was from a poor family, so he couldn't pursue his dream of becoming a painter until his early 40s. Even after his debut, his paintings were often ridiculed by other artists and critiques by how flat and childish his techniques were. He never had an art education and did not use the traditional techniques taught by the art academies at the time. He often worked from his imagination, like his famous jungle series were created when he'd never been to a jungle. Even through many criticisms, Rousseau never gave up. He continued to pursue his own genre of painting, which he applied simple and pure colors with clear outlines. And however awkward they may seem, it delivers both vigorous and simple ambience to the painting. Although other artists criticized his techniques, they could not deny the fact that his paintings were different, and his uniqueness eventually gained the recognition of the people. But there is one artist who accelerated his fame, Pablo Picasso. When young Picasso saw Rousseau's painting at the canvas store as a used canvas to paint over, Picasso immediately fell in love with Rousseau's unique style. 20-something Picasso started to search for the artist of the painting and met Rousseau in his 60s. Then on, Picasso hosted several events among the artists in Rousseau's honor, and Rousseau's work started to gain its fame exponentially among the young artists at the time. Now this painting, The Wedding Party, don't seem much at a quick glance, just a normal wedding photo. But when you observe it closely, you can detect many of Rousseau's style of bringing strangeness into a real world. The background seems to have diverse species of the trees, and he individually painted the leaves in comical ways. It shows his intention to break away from the traditional backdrops in the photos. The size of the dog seems very disproportional compared to the people in the back, but it grabs audience attention into the composition. The bride's veil portrays as if she's floating in the air, and we know this is not a mistake. When they examine the painting through x-ray vision, you can see the veil was actually revised later on. Rousseau exhibited this painting at Salon de Independent in 1905. Number 5 on our list is The Painter's Knees by André Drain. André Drain often painted his family, especially his niece. This painting is Drain's beloved niece at age of 12 and it was created in 1931. One arm is painted with long and smooth brush strokes, and the other arm and the face is painted with short and sharp brush strokes. This shows how Durain's phobism was greatly influenced by the neo-impressionist pointillism techniques. This portrait of his niece delivers a serene and calm sentiment. This is a great example of Durain's unique techniques of portraying the psychological effects through the portraits. André Durain was the French artist who was the co-founder of the phobism with Anne Matisse which brings us to our number 4, Portrait of Three Sisters by Annie Matisse. Annie Matisse is a French artist who is known as the father of Phobism. Phobism is a style of art that emphasizes strong colors to project positive expressions and portray a structure without copying the reality of the nature. They believe the emotional responses and intuitions were more important than the techniques or even the subject itself. It is a new way of using colors and expressions and its basic flatness became a precursor to cubism, expressionism, and abstraction. Matisse and Durain started the movement of phobism through their own exhibitions. The critics call them Lufobes for their bold avant-garde approach to the colors and expressions. This is one of Matisse's masterpieces that was inspired by Manet's The Balcony and many of the oriental prints that influenced his work. This painting is the part of the series of three sisters that he created, which he personally curated at the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. 
This painting was purchased through a public auction in the honor of Dr. Barnes upon his past. In this painting, you can see the Matisse's style of basic lines and use of juxtaposed colors. It has several levels of perspectives and three sisters seem to portray different attitudes within the pose. Number three on our list of top six you should see at the Orangery Museum is Woman with Dogs by Marie Lawrenson. Marie Lawrenson is a female cubism artist who developed her own style of representation. Many paintings at the time had women portrayed by male artists. Lawrence's work is unique as they were portrayed through women's eyes. She was among the circle of modern artists along with Picasso and although her work shows the influence of cubist painters, she developed her own unique approach to abstraction which often had women and animals. I like her style of pastel colors and smooth lines that portrays a mixture of phobism and cubism. The painting explanation at the museum indicated that two young women are not facing each other and don't seem to know each other. But its soft pastel colors express positive and ambient atmosphere, even joyful and loving emotions to me. It also has this beautiful frame that is made of mirrors and glass beads that you have to see. This was her unique and innovative approach and it magnifies its beauty and sophistication even further. Number 2 on our list is Girls on Piano by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Renoir often painted girls on piano. There are at least six different versions of this type of painting. This is a sketch draft to the masterpiece in the Musée d'Orsay, but I like seeing the drafts because they let you have more insights on the artist's work process and contemplation over their color selections. And it also shows that masterpieces are the results of continuous studies, practices, and the explorations of the artist. Renoir focused only on the girls in this painting. It shows Renoir's initial color selections and careful positioning of the girls and the piano. On the final version, he used more gold in the background, so he updated girls' bow from pink to navy to balance out the warm gold. And the color navy on the bows segregates the warm gold in the background and the gold he used on the objects. Pierre-Auguste Renoir is a French artist who is famous for his vibrant lights and saturated colors. He often portrayed candid poses that we encounter in our daily lives and wanted to deliver the joy and happiness through his work. This approach helped audience to easily resonate with the emotions that Renoir wanted to deliver through his paintings. Number one on our list of six you should see at the Orangery Museum in Paris is Monet's Water Lilies. There are about 250 paintings of Monet's water lilies, and this series was the focus of the artist during the last 30 years of his life. By this time, both of his wives passed, and he lost his beloved son during the war. He suffered from poor eyesight with cataracts, and this impacts the colors he used as you can see the transition of colors from his earlier to later works. Upon his death, French government built a dedicated room for eight of Monet's water lilies and opened for the public in 1927. This circle meditation room delivers a serene calmness surrounded by the water lilies. If you visit towards the end hour, you can enjoy the room without too many people. To understand Monet's water lilies, we need to look into his life as a young artist. He was a poor artist during the transition from realism to impressionism. At the time, most of the artists worked on the sketches outdoors and finished their paintings in their studios. But without his own studio, Monet worked on his paintings outdoor all day long. By observing the same scene all day and several months at a time, Monet learns the biggest lesson from the nature on the impacts of the natural lights. He realized that one scenery can deliver multiple feelings and expressions depending on the time of the day and the season of the year. With this idea, he started to work on the series of paintings of same object or scenery. One of his first series is haystacks. None of his haystacks are the same. To emphasize the uniqueness of each painting within the series, he gave a slightly different names to each painting. The haystack series brought Monet's first fame as it made his paintings 10 times more valuable than before. As Monet gained his fame through his series, he purchased an estate away from the Paris city and invested majority of his time and money on expanding his garden. He made a pond within his garden, and this is where he created all his masterpieces of water lilies. And today, Monet's home and his pond is open for the public to come and visit. That's all guys! This is Six You Should See at the Orangery Museum in Paris. Don't forget to check out our other Six You Should See videos, and if you like us, 
सब्सक्राइब